I first got my hands on my Context DVS back in February 2021 after deciding to buy it instead of the Context D2 from an eBay reseller. I decided to go for it not just because it goes for way less than the Context D2, but also because of its lens. Yes, it's Carl Zeiss T-Star Varisonar 2856 to 56 mm lens, maybe inferior to the 38mm of the Context D2, but it's still a Carl Zeiss lens that lives up to its brand's reputation. Besides, I really like the 28mm focal length, and having the zoom capability really made the camera versatile. The photos that I got from my Contax DVS are sharp with good contrast, and while the lens apertures only opened up to 3.5 in its widest setting, I don't recall having any major problems using it in low light. It has a bright but pleasing flash, and the fact that you can control its flash setting defaults manually is great. I usually have it on off. Focusing was never a problem too. It may not be as quick as modern day autofocus cameras and only has one autofocus point, but it's pretty reliable in my opinion. But more than its technical specifications, what I really liked about this camera is that it made me want to go out and shoot. Its aesthetics and build quality are amazing, it felt good in my hands, and it felt good to shoot with. It was pretty much a functional accessory. Within a year of owning this camera, I've ran about two dozen film rolls in it, I've taken it out on photo walks, brought it on road trips, and used it in questionable weather situations. Needless to say, it became my favorite point-and-shoot camera to the point that it became my most used film camera of 2021 and early 2022. Perhaps that's part of the reason why it broke on me. First released in 1994, this camera's electronics are now way past their prime and problems are becoming more likely as they age. Just like me. One common problem is the loosening of its shutter wire. Basically, every time you turn on this camera, there's a chance that this ribbon wiring inside will snap. And you can call this bad design, and maybe it is, but I guess the designers back then just didn't expect people to be using this 30 or so years later. Which, by the way, the T2 kind has the same problem. But once this shutter wire loosens, then the camera basically becomes a brick. 
And, and that's exactly what happened to mine. I found some tutorials online on how to fix it, but it seems really hard and time-consuming. Some say I won't really lose anything if I try to fix it, you know, aside from money for the parts, precious time, and sanity. So I don't know, um, do I recommend it? I guess it depends. Right now I'm wondering whether it's worth taking a risk and getting another one of these cameras because I really liked it and I often found myself wishing that mine still works. And maybe it's arguable that paying 400 to 500 Canadian dollars for a year of good use and experience is well worth the risk. Who knows, I might just get another one just because prices are starting to go up. But in the meantime, I still have other cameras that also deserve some love. So thank you all for watching, I'm Bon, and I hope to see you all again in the next video. Cheers!